do 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 it's monkey mania okay let's do one more monkey and then we'll take a one episode break from monkey mania in case anyone's getting burned out on our banana munching pals if you can imagine that this is a pretty impressive set when it's all together power of the primes optimal optimus repainted to be more in line with the classics optimus primal color scheme sitting there on this weirdly charming plastic and cardboard throne it makes an impression for sure now, I've never been a big fan of the original Optimal Optimus design. If I'm honest, it just never really clicked with me. I think it's the colours. They just look like someone hit random in the character creator. With this sleeker, more considered approach, I appreciate it a little more. There are some extras included in this set. First thing you may notice, aside the throne, which you'll get to, is Primal's crown. Finally, someone who deserves one, eh? It's really nicely painted with fun dots of colour and of course the maximal symbol. You can take it off and put it back on again. We've also got the Scepter of Sparks, a huge mace-like weapon that Primal can hold when he feels like it. It's not the most stable thing in the world. Adorning the Scepter are four Prime Masters, Amalgamus, Nexus, Prima, and the 13th. Now, like all Prime Masters, they are largely useless and I hate them, but these are actually quite nicely painted. You can pop them back into the Scepter, facing the wall like the end of the Blair Witch. The final new accessory is that Throne of the Primes, and it did have a pretty nice cardboard background, which has gone missing, probably to the recycling, but even without it, this thing is great. Again, like the Agent Ravage set or the Quintesson Pit of Judgment, it's just some flimsy cardboard and moulded plastic, but it's so lovingly put together, you can't help but love it. You set Optimus on the seat and... You know, that's enough, surely. Oh wait, yeah, they've got this wheel at the top you can put in Prime Masters, or even Titan Master heads, and spin them round like a ghoulish Wheel of Fortune, and that's... that's nice. Okay, let's look at Optimal Optimus himself. First impressions are very positive. As I say, the colours do a lot for the design that I'm not really into, and the toy itself is nicely sculpted. Lots of clean, sleek corners and lines to go with those more organic touches. And look at these giant hands, and these absolutely huge stompers. It's a wonderfully put together bot. With the back end, it's clear there's a whole other entity slapped on there. It doesn't win any beauty contests from behind, but hey, neither do we. Hey! Sorry, sorry, neither do I. There are a few other accessories which we should touch upon before you start crying. Like these two guns you can store in the legs here. They're pretty sweet little rifles you can combine into one large overcompensator that, due to how the hands work, looks awful. The guns can also slap into either side of Optimus' head, or if you swing down the cockpit, out of his gorilla boobs, and I do prefer this look. The other major accessory is in the cockpit on the boy's chest here. Open the canopy and you've got this very odd white matrix with a non-transforming Prime Master sized block inside. You can remove that and put an actual Prime Master in there if you want to waste your time. A matrix is always a welcome addition though, don't start. Okay, so that big slab on the back, what's the deal there? I hear you whine and moan. Well, let's detach this whole thing. Huh, something's going on here. I know what this is. It's a Cybertronian cargo ship, isn't it? Okay, okay, I'll just transform a bit here and there, and, and there we go. Perfect. Nothing more to talk about with this. Let's get to the rest of the toy. So the rest of the body could never hope to live up to the impossible standards the cargo ship just set, but we'll try. So there's a little bit of messing around required for the next few modes. First up, we've got this big gorilla mode. This involves rotating the shoulders down, folding the legs in to make them a little bit more squat, and flip out this really quite ugly techno gorilla head. The armour at the top of the shoulders can be removed to fill out the forearms too. Now I know what you're thinking, and I thought it too, this gorilla needs a filler, as there's a big hole in his back. And that's where the incredible star find of 2023, the cargo ship, comes in. Get that folded and slid into the willing crevice on Prime's back, attach the two guns to the top, and we've got a pretty serviceable Optimus Primal. Do I love it? No, but I do appreciate the look and the clear thought that's gone into it. The legs fold down into two immobile lumps that I wish there was more going on with, but overall it's got the same great articulation in the hands and arms that the robot has, so shut it. Now if you remove that scintillating wonderful cargo ship, you have the gorilla ride on top of it like a surfboard. Now that's not something I made up, there are connections on the feet for this specific activity. In an uncertain world I can at least tell you this is the best thing about the set. I will never adore anything as much as a gorilla on a flying surfboard. I loved it on Transmetal Primal and I love it here. Our final mode is the jet mode which I've always hated in whatever form they tried to bullshit their way through in various incarnations of this design. Look at this state of it, combining that superb cargo ship into the larger body and ruining its sleek lines like that. Honestly, this is the second and last time this toy will ever be in this mode, until Toy Fu sells him on after my gruesome death. Taking a look at the cargo ship itself, it's nice, eh? A Cybertronian mode gets away with a lot more than, say, an Earth mode does. Still, this... Hold on. Does this... Does this thing... Wait, wait a second here. Is this also a... Oh my goodness, it's Optimus Primal. 
It's, it's just a fun, nicely realised Optimus Primal. Who would have thought? Now we can use those smaller weapons as Primal here can wield them either as guns or as clubs. It's up to you. There's a ton of great detail inside, a lovely head sculpt, and the proportions work really well. The only downside is this absolutely massive backpack. We're in RC territory here, but it doesn't stop him pulling some nice poses. Well, it does, when it comes to bending the legs backwards at least. The legs themselves could dearly have done with ankles too. Overall, it's a pop up a primal I up up appreciate. Sorry, I did stumble over my words a little there. Well, with that revelation out of the way, we can get Primal back into his award-winning cargo ship mode, fold it in place and slam it back into the main body, and we're back in big boy territory. I wasn't too taken with this toy on release, but a few years on the shelf have meant I've warmed to the big lug. There's a ton to the toy, lots of play features, and that throwing mace crown combo is so ridiculous. A centerpiece for the monkey shelf, folks. And if you don't like that, I've got two words for you. See you later.